Give me do any no so in case you make it. Give me where you got any or the any name or the any name. Keep putting that question mark there. No, you know when I get born, you know God. Can you wear that? Oh, you don't wear it. Push me like can you? I got you wear my name better. Can you wear? Can you never be good? Can you not wear? Be a nigger again. Can you wear? Make a beer from where you just sit. Can you wear? Any better man? So you have to go to the house for one jam. C'est un ébig et nous Welcome once again to my channel. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you're joining me from Africa, from Asia, from America, from Europe, from Australia, I thank you very much wherever you are joining from. I say God bless you. Thank you so much for your contribution on my channel. Thank you for your comments on the comment section. I'm being educated by your comments all the time. I must appreciate you. Thank you very much. For those of you who are not yet commenting, please do comment, give your comment after watching, and also give a thumbs up to the video. I appreciate you for your contributions, and I'm blessed, just like you are blessed also. We will continue to fight for this very freedom, until freedom is being achieved. We are not hating anybody, we are not praying for the death of anybody, we are not calling for war. All we are asking is for people to have the right to decide their fate. Referendum, that is what we are asking for, that everybody should have the right to decide their fate, where they want to belong, or what they want to be. That is what we're asking for. And today, we are back again talking about the same issue. The insecurity in Nigeria is unimaginable. The insecurity in Nigeria is unimaginable. And this insecurity in Nigeria is artificial. People created the insecurity and they do not want to do anything about it. Instead, they are trying to push the blame on other people. They push the blame on other people and force us to agree with them, force us to believe what they are saying, force us to move along with them with the, whatever they are preaching. Each and every moment, they are always trying to change the narrative. You and I know that the northern part of Nigeria has been taken over by the terrorists. They have taken over, and the government seems not to do anything. The northerners are dealing with it, in as much as so many of them might not agree with the situation, but they have no choice because their elites have plunged them into so much insecurity that they are helpless. You can see them crying on the social media. The governors are coming out to cry. Most of them are coming out to cry. I cry. I cry. Have no solution. Their traditional rulers are crying. But it was that same Fulani that brought that very insecurity. The Fulani Kabbalists, who has taken over the north, they have taken over the northern leadership, taken over all their uh, forum, every forum, call it the Arewa forum or whatever. It's been occupied by the Fulani, and there is nothing they can do. They have taken over everywhere, and the Fulani have. Try to force them to believe whatever they are preaching. They have no choice than to follow it. But what concerns us from the South is that we do not want to share from that very insecurity. We have to protect ourselves. And the only way we think we can protect ourselves is by breaking away from that very contraption so that they cannot rob us with their insecurity. If they want to keep the insecurity, let them keep it since they don't want to do anything about it. Each time they try to change the narrative, instead of saying the truth, and facing it squarely to come against it, they will not. These terrorists are taking over the north. When they have started, Boko Haram started the operation. They told us that any fight against Boko Haram is fight against the north. When Good Luck Jonathan was there, in as much as Good Luck Jonathan was inefficient, he was not doing enough, but he was making some attempts to fight against this Boko Haram. Buhari, on his speech, came to stand for them and say that it was war against the north. They tried every propaganda to make sure that the, the, the military then was not effective. Every operation was not effective. Even this same Boko Haram that we are talking about, that was the time they appointed Muhammad Buhari to speak on their behalf, to go for negotiation on their behalf. So when you see all this happen, and now you have that man that they were appointed before as the person who is your president, a man who has been appointed by terrorists to speak for them is now your president. You could imagine what is going to happen. He came and promised that he's going to fight. In case we forget some of the promises he made, I will play the video for you to remember. These are the promises he made. But today, what are we seeing? The insecurity has become worse. Instead of fighting against the insecurity, what they are doing is to rename them. It was Boko Haram who woke up one day and they begin to call them bandits. They renamed them, regrouped them and begin to call them bandits. Allow them into the town because of their name they gave them. They allowed them into the access into the town to begin to kidnap people and ask for ransom. And they were paying happily. They were paying happily. Government was negotiating, paying billion, million, billions have been paid, trillions have been paid to these very people by the government, all in the name of negotiation. Instead of fighting against the, 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 the insurgents, they were negotiating with them. 
They renamed them to make them acceptable to the people. They renamed them bandits. Some of us will continue to say that these are not bandits. These are terrorists. These are not bandits. They said it's a bandit. You don't, even a person, one of their clients came out and began to make defense for them. Begin to tell us how innocent the bandits are. How innocent they are. They are citizens. They should be reintegrated. They should be forgiven. A northern man came. What do you Shegumi. Was making a case for them. Even in the national television, he was shutting people down. They should stop calling them terrorists. Sheikh, you seem to approach this with a sense that uh, these bandits are victims. Exactly why? And um, what are their demands really? What do they really want? Because in spite of your negotiations, attacks continue. Uh, attacks have lessened. It's just one case you have of the Kagara boys. Without it, uh, there is a drastic change. In, we have seen absolute uh, drastic change in Zamfara, in Sokoto State, where negotiations are going. So you don't take sporadic, sporadic cases and just, uh, what do you call it, explode it. Even the Medjugorje incident here is, I don't think it's a big threat because the military has surrounded the country, the town. There is no more continuous bombardment. It's just sporadic, sporadic uh, attacks. Shouldn't frighten people. I think the military should be on top of the situation. But yet, the negotiations are very useful in seeing that we uh, get these boys or youth to get sense into their head and just admonish them and show them the fear of God. And it also works. Okay, so um, in terms of what they want, what exactly did they say to you will make them surrender their weapons? Because no matter how you look at it, the criminals. You see, uh, you are emphasizing on criminality. I don't know who, even the press, press are criminals too, because they are putting fire into, what they are putting uh, oil into fire. These people are listening to you. You see, you don't address them as, as criminals if you want them to succumb. Youth are ready to put down their weapons. Now you are, they are hearing you are calling them criminals. How do you want them to cooperate? So you have to show them they are Nigerians, and that they should not hurt children, and that they should be law-abiding, they should be good. This, this is the language we want to hear the, the press to assist us in getting the boys. You see, when we talk with them with a nice uh, wordings, they are ready to put their weapons down. They are ready to listen to us. Well, you see, when the language is about criminality, about kill them, about jail them, then this is what we, we end up having. And you can see even the Niger Delta people have already started coming out too to, to threaten the nation. So it's a worldwide, it's a nationwide problem we have with the youth taking weapons because it gives them a, a false sense of authority and importance. But if you show them, look, you are part of the society, you are part of the nation, please don't injure us. Let's walk out, let's listen to them. What do you really actually want? You will find that you are getting results. But that language of criminality, I think, should be struck out temporarily from the... Sheikh Gumi, let me come back to this question. Anybody who picks up arms and goes around shooting and killing people, kidnapping and demanding ransom in some cases, raping women in different communities, that is an act of a criminal. Do you believe... As an upstanding Nigerian, that criminal. anybody that does this is, is a criminal, first and foremost. Yes. Do you believe it's a that? a criminal, but, but let me show you one thing. If but I don't wish for you anything, but you yourself now, if you are stopped by armed robbers on the road, this word criminals, you will not use it on them. You will not use it on them. Tell them good things and obey all their instructions so that you get, uh, you save yourself. We are trying to save the nation from this youth that has a false sense of authority when they see they are holding guns. How do we get and catch the guns from them? The language we use is very important. So what you're saying is that we should not call a spade a spade. You have been saying no. that these bandits, well, you say we should not call them bandits or we shouldn't call them uh, criminals, that Nigerian government should negotiate with all criminals all over the country in order to have peace. Are you saying we should also negotiate with armed robbers, with rapists, with other kidnappers, whether they are from any tribe, whether they are Igbo, 
Yoruba, oh, okay, uh, Nupe, you. and you what see? have you? Is that what you're saying, yes, yes, Sheikh? Yes, you see, an arm robber. Let me tell you something. If an arm robber stops somebody, this same victim is the first person that negotiates with the arm robber. So if the victim himself is ready to negotiate with the arm robber, what more of somebody who is not the victim? What we are saying, you don't put it in such a bad language. What we what we mean, we have a problem now. The proliferations of arms. And there are drugs, and there is almost a semi illiterate population. So, how do you deal with it? By castigating them and abusing them in the media? They don't, you see, you're even talking to yourself. They don't even listen to you, maybe. So, the best thing for us is the clergy, the respected people, elderly, try to get and reach them, put sense into their head. When you go and meet them, you'll see they will lower their head, they will listen. They will, they, will, they will start giving excuses. When they start giving excuses, accept their excuse, but show them the way out. We are trying to nurture them out from this criminality into to being good citizens. It's not by just castigating them in, because we have... You see, you have the, the, the power and instrument of media, and you should use it properly that we, we, we bring people together and not try to spread things that divide people. This youth, I'm telling you, they need somebody to bring them close, to show them a, a, what you call it, a kind of soft side. Shutting people down on national television to stop calling these people bandits. Telling us how innocent they are. Before your very eyes, in the government, government said nothing. They never invited him, DSS never invited him, police never invited him, never said anything about him. He walking about, he even went to their camps to negotiate with them and kept, come out, begin, become their spokesperson. This was going on and go on and on and on and on until we got to get to where we are today. Until we got to where we are today. And where we are today now, the whole place has been occupied, taken over by terrorists, not just the Boko Haram, this time around, ISWAP and so many other groups. They have taken over the northern part of Nigeria. And now they are coming out to begin to rename them again. They are doing another renaming. You will see the media when they are going to talk about them. They are now trying to make us believe that they are unknown government. They are not changing them from bandit or known government. You see the way, you see how dubious and wicked these people are. The media is now trying, when they are now explaining about the issue of insecurity in the north, they are now trying to merge it together with the insecurity they are having in the southern part of Nigeria. Knowing full well that fully well that these two insecurities are not the same. The insecurity we have in there. Southern part of Nigeria is called by the federal government of Nigeria. The Boko Haram that they recruited in their military are the ones killing innocent people in the southern part of Nigeria. There are, there are no terrorists, that, there are no known citizens of that very southern part of Nigeria that are killing people. There are no known one, no known group, no known group. The people who are agitating are agitating peacefully. They are not armed. ESN that was formed by Martin and the Kano are in the bushes fighting against the terrorists who, are, who want to invade the land. The Fulani Hessmen, the Fulani AK-47 Hessmen that want to invade the land. That is what the ESN are fighting against. They are not in the street. They are not at homes. But these people, when they come to the media, they are talking, they try to bring this section together and try to rename them now. They are trying to make sure that they begin to generalize everything to be the same. That is what the media... Now, the media, you will see... Somebody in the media, Shegu or what they call him in a channel television. I'm going to play the video when he was trying to talk to uh, interview Umay. I will play the video. Then watch carefully the way he was addressing the issue, trying to call them all on no government. On no government, we know that it exists in the eastern part of south, southern part of Nigeria. They have never killed an innocent person. They have never killed an innocent person. All the attack they are going is against the terrorists. Against the government terrorists, the, gov the Boko Haram, the government have given uniform. All the Boko Haram, the government have given uniform to fight against the innocent masses. Those are the people that are no government in the East are fighting against. Even most of them, when they're operating, you will see people walking about, going about their business business. Unknown gunmen in the southern part of Nigeria are not kidnappers. They don't kidnap. They don't kill innocent people. But now, the media is trying to paint every... The bandits, the terrorists, they want to now rename them as a known government. That is another renaming that is coming. Watch the interview. I would like to watch and listen carefully. Watch till the end. Then you will see what I'm trying to say. Point out. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight on the program. And happy democracy, dear Mosse.
Uh, let's begin the conversation. Uh, conversation. I'd like to ask you. Nigerians, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Nigerians are observing a public holiday to commemorate democracy. Day, but sadly, some sad news of killings in Zaria and Plateau State came up in the news today with this tag of unknown gunmen behind some of these attacks. When we wonder who exactly these elements are as a governor, I know you are privy to security report, and you once said in Abuja that we have been badly infiltrated in the country. But please give Nigerians a sense of clarity on who these elements, the so-called unknown government, might be. Thank you, Sheo, and good evening, uh, viewers. Uh, uh, Sheo, when you talk about uh, killings, uh, very unfortunate uh, in Zamfara State. Uh, very, very unfortunate, and my prayer is that uh, God will judge uh, the departed souls fairly and receive uh, their spirits. Uh, but I, I'm not uh, the governor of Zamfara State to uh, begin to talk about the unknown government in Zamfara State. Uh, if you ask me about uh, my state, I should be able to say something about that. The reason why I'm asking is that the issue of unknown government is not... Uh uh, uh, exclusive to some uh, to a, a certain state, these unknown gunmen, as uh, they attack, they, they they keep attacking everywhere and uh, without people really knowing who they are. But I'm taking that premise based on the security meeting you had last week and the fact that you made them as uh, you said something recently that we have been badly infiltrated. Could these be the infiltrators that are perhaps behind these killings that we are seeing in the country? Uh, the infiltration I mean is in terms of inciting our people, uh, uh, inciting the youths, you know, that's what I mean. Not in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, killer infiltration, you know, so to say. Uh, there are a lot of, um, you know, sympathies and the comments, you know, beyond our region. That seems to be like, um, you know, the in sympathy with, uh, in our region. Some are. But some is mainly to incite, you know, our people to incite the youths so that we can do another war. At your meeting last week, the leaders reject, including yourself, came out to reject agitations for secession. Did you also discuss at that meeting, because federal ministers were there, service chiefs were there, but Nigerians are saying that they need to, for a national dialogue. Did you, did you discuss the need for a national dialogue and a real need uh, whatever that my means, uh, I mean restructuring. Whatever it means to, it, it means different thing to anybody. Do you also did you also discuss the need for restructuring Nigeria and the need for a national dialogue? Well, so, um, what we discussed was uh, precisely uh, as it concerns Southeast um, because of the, the restiveness of our youths and the, our youths demand. I'm not sure it included. Uh, national dialogue you know just some sections of uh, southeast youths are saying you know that there is marginalization uh there is uh, you know maltreatment to the people of southeast and they want you know a country of theirs and uh, our position as leaders is uh, whom did you discuss that with that we are better in a united and free nigeria so we do not accept you know their position in terms of secession. but we can as leaders you know listen to them and that's what you're going to do on 19th of this month we want to listen to them we want to find the areas they feel that South is marginalized, and then we engage ourselves first and foremost to discuss it and find if there are some merits in it, and then we can engage at the center. So, um, are you have you started, for example, in your state, these agitators, some of those whom you refer to as the rest of youth, have you had time to discuss and sit down with them? Yes, you know, there was this uh, beautiful program that Mr. President came up with, and that's the NSAS, uh, you know, uh, program, you know, conference, you know. So I don't know about other states, but we've had one in our state, and it was a very beautiful opportunity because we could feel the uh, impulse of the youth, we could feel, you know, what the agitations are. And we also were able to tell them, you know, where they are also failing as youths and as young men and women of this country, that it's not all about leadership. The lead is also a problem in this country where people can no longer sit down and look at, you know, tangible and meaningful things to engage in. 
and everybody is all about politics and what we can get as easy money. That wasn't so when we were growing up, when we were in secondary schools and when we universities. You know, we were doing more than what is going on now. So we were able to do that and they articulated their demands. And so we are waiting for the next stage of engagement at zonal level so that we can table this and it will also progress to the center. If some of the youth in the Southeast region are agitated and some of them are seeking an exit from this uh, uh, union, uh, perhaps uh, one we wonder whether the leaders are also asking them why they are thinking in this uh, regard. Maybe they have, uh, they, are, they, have, uh, they have enough education or information to their agitation because I also understand that uh, you uh, left the PDP because of the agitation on your mind on what you think that uh, you should be accorded or your people should be accorded and you're not getting in the PDP, for example. But let me ask you, uh, frontally, Governor, do you have the feeling that your region, the Southeast, on a national scale, is being marginalized in the scheme of things in this country? You see, this word marginalization is so ambiguous. You know, if you ask some regions, you know, then we feel that even some other regions are marginalizing them. And so my position about this is, let us even get all the details of the marginalization. I cannot say that, you know, there are not some pains in terms of this marginalization in Southeast. And so with other regions, you know, so... We are addressing our own region. We are saying to our youths, no, we don't want to succeed. We don't want to go away from the United Nigeria. That whatever may be the grievances that we can sit down and discuss this. And Shane, there's a lot of misinformation, you know. And I give you an example, and I like to say this. When we cry that, you know, as, uh, you know, in Divo, that we don't have any service chief. And I say it's not true. We, the part of Delta is, you know, is evil. Part of Rivers is evil. And uh, even in Delta, we've had, uh, you know, the chairman of Ohio's coming from Delta State. And so we have somebody that is coming from new extraction in Delta State, who is the uh, uh, CDS, you know, in charge of uh, the, 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 the joint chiefs, you know. And uh, people are still saying we are not represented in the uh, uh, Security Council uh, meeting of this nation. So I want to disagree with that. Number two. When uh, Atairu was uh, the, uh, the late Atairu may so rest in peace, uh, uh, when he was the chief of army staff, the, uh, our brother, you know, uh, uh, Zita Akaron or something, you know, was uh, number 15 in ranking. And uh, Atairu, out of love and relationship, took him from number 15 to make him second in command. Now, the man ought to have told our people, this is, you know, favor done to him. And so we are representing, we are representing you so that we appreciate the leadership of our staff and I appreciate Mr. President because the actual owner of the military is actually the number two who is in charge of operations and logistics. So that didn't happen. And that's why I had to pay visit to the family of, uh, you know, uh, 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 later Tairu, you know, on behalf of Southeast to appreciate this is what he did. And of course, his military uh, assistant is also my junior brother who is from the same local government with me. So there are misinformation. And when it was time to replace the service chief, they said, oh, look, this man is from South East, the second you know, person he should occupy the place. So I think his misinformation is actually number 15. I would have loved if he occupies it. But that is not to say that we never occupied the chief of our Islam. Let us not forget this. All right. We are due for break, but uh, to, for Nigerians to get it clearly, uh, you don't think that the South is a marginalized, just in, in, straight, in the straight word? It's not a straight, you know, word thing, uh, Shin. There are issues, uh, which I explained to the, uh, the, the wonderful uh, Honorable Minister of Defense, you know, very uh, wonderful man, very frank in our discussion with him. Uh, you know, my position is that there are certain things that happen in this country where even the Mr. President, even the ministers will not be aware of. You know, where in a particular ministry, you know, somebody from South is due for promotion or is due for a particular appointment, is not appointed. How will Mr. President know about it? And so my position is that we should articulate all our grievances and let the youths give us the opportunity and the chance to engage the center. 
All right. Some of these grievances, like the one I just explained now, some of these grievances, we may take it on our own and look at the issues, you know, and then we will be able to say, oh, this is good, this is not good. For example, I never knew that, you know, uh, somebody from South East is in charge, is second in command in Navy or, or in Air Force. I can't remember precisely. We need to know some of these things. And it is when these complaints are made, you know, internally within the South so that we can all sit down and discuss it. I right. cannot say Chegu, that you know, um, you know, the southeast is not marginalized, but it cannot be in totality. From every indication, you can see that these people don't mean well for us. That is more reason why we all have to speak up. Use your platform, whatever platform you have, use your platform to speak. Use your platform, no matter how small, no matter how big, begin to speak up for the situation of that contraption called Nigeria. Let the world continue to hear our voice, even if they will not come to our aid. At least let them hear us. Let people know what is going on in that contraption called Nigeria. The indigenous people of that country do not have a voice. And there is a plan to make sure that the indigenous people of that country is being subdued and destroyed. Indigenous people, it doesn't matter where they are, in the south, in the east, in the north, these people are being oppressed. And the Fulanese want to grab the whole land to themselves and bring their brothers. They are saying it in open. They are not missing what about it. The president who is a Fulani is even saying it, not missing what. They want to bring Fulani from the other part of the world and occupy Nigeria as their own, which is not possible. That can never, ever happen. That is why we are asking for Biafra Republic, asking for Udua Republic, that this republic should come and stay, stand on their own. And we only call for referendum. Referendum is not a call for war. But if you decide to interpret it as war and say the only way we can have our peace is by war, so be it. We have no other choice. We cannot be scared of it. We are not scared. We are not scared of it. Don't threaten us with that issue of war, war, war. They have tried it for a long time. It doesn't work. And can never work. Whichever platform you are using, please use your platform to speak up. Speak for the defense of your people. Join your ethnic group and begin to talk for the defense of your people. That is the only way we can all survive and have a nation we can be proud of. Break it up to save life. Thank you so much for watching. Go to the comment section, leave your comments, and continue to contribute as much as you can. Share the video with your friends. Share the video in any group where you belong so that people will hear our voice. We have to continue to speak. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. That is the only way we can stay safe. Thank you so much for watching, and remember this. Bye-bye. See you again on the next video.